I'm speaking right now. People are dying, hour by hour, suffering from intolerable diseases, who could have had a happy life only if they got the right organs at the right time. Today, ladies and gentlemen, your honorable judges, our motion is that parent patients should be allowed to buy organs from life donors. And I'm the first speaker on behalf of the proposition side, Park Chung Hyun. According to dictionary.com, <coughs> we define organs as a grouping of tissues into a distinct structure. In this case, which is limited to live do organ donations, organs that may, may gravely danger one's health or even kill someone if removed for <coughs> donation. For example, livers or kidneys. And we define donors as an individual from whom blood, tissue, or an organ is taken for transfusion or transplantation. However, in this case, it is limited to donors who are physically fit, in good general health, and free from high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, kidney disease, and heart disease. In order to win this debate, we will prove that patients on, our, on the waiting list are in grave danger right now, and that buying organs from live donors <coughs> will be the best solution. As the first speaker, speaker, I will elaborate on our first argument that legalizing live organ transplants will weaken the size of the black, current black market. Then our second speaker, He Jin, will demonstrate our second and third arguments, how our stance saves people in need, and why this is the best solution for the current situation. After this, Toon will identify the key, key clashes and explain why we have won this debate. So, our first argument is that allowing patients to buy organs from live donors will weaken the current black market. Currently, due to the high profit, profitability of the job, many innocent people are, being, are suffering from the consequences of the black market. There are actually many cases where people get kidnapped and get their organs stolen. From, get their organs stolen. In fact, according to the India Times, a peasant claimed that one of his kidneys has been stolen after having been hospitalized in an army hospital because just because of a stomach ache. Now, what kind of gover government would that, let this happen? However, the legalization of organ trades will effectively control the current black market. First of all, because the market is controlled by the government, the price control will be much easier. According to the West Australian newspaper, black market organs are traded in the price ranging from $34,000 to $68,000. However, as soon as the government gets hold of the market, the price can drop to $6,000 to $8,000. The reason black market organs are expensive is because they are traded through illegal routes. The supply is very low, result resulting in a very high price of the organs. Also, patients do not get to have a choice. Um, whether to buy the organ or not, because the black market is the only way to, that <coughs> patients get organs. So they, uh, so they have to pay the price. Of the information. <coughs> um, so they have to pay the price, um, whatever the seller requires. Price is bound to be expensive. However, if the organs are traded through clear legal routes, patients will be able to receive the organs from various places, including including hospitals, legal organizations. So, this will result in the dramatic increase of the supply, <coughs> which definitely leads to the organ, the decrease in organ prices. So, Mr. Permission Ma'am. Yes. Could you actually elaborate on how the government will take hold of these organs and how they will control the price? Well, it will, it will not be easy, but instead of letting the black market handle this, if the government act actively uh, involves in the process, it will be much better. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I have, I have talked to you about how legalization of organs, organ trade between patients and live donors will weaken the black market. And next, our second speaker, Hitchin, will demonstrate the second and third arguments. Thank you.
Okay, Penjun's the next speaker for, uh, the first speaker for the op side. Let's welcome him. Okay, in 1991, World Health Assembly endorsed WHO guiding principles forbidding organ sales, stating that the human body and its parts cannot be the subject of commercial transactions. Ladies and gentlemen, today's motion is that people, uh, patients, whether pe patients should be allowed to buy organs from live donors. And outside of the house, strongly believes that the price of trading life will lead to a higher possibility of way to death. And to, in order to win today's debate, the opposition side, which is outside, has to prove that the government allowing people to buy organs from live donors brings harms, which will harms health, morality, and fairness. And the proposition side has to prove that none of the uh, detriments proposed proposed by the opposition will come true, and that motion will provide substantial benefits for the concerned party of the issue. And the first speaker, as a, as a, me, is going to give an ar two arguments, which is the first, the act of buying organs from live donors is immoral, and second, it will bring about risks to live donors and patients. And the second speaker, uh, which is, uh, who is Dong Jun, who given the third argument, which is stating that unfair disadvantage to both uh, live donors and patients will occur due to the act of buying organs from live donors. And the last speaker is going to talk about, the, is, is a reply speaker giving uh, the key clash, the main clash is that the person, the, the, the opposition and the proposition has brought up and the uh, why we have won the debate. So before I give begin with my argument, I'll give some rebuts to the uh, points that the first uh, speaker of the proposition side has mentioned. Uh, he said that uh, she, she said that with the uh, legalization of uh, buying organs from live donors, there will be a decrease in kidnap and, and stealing of organs. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, kidnapping and stealing those things is why it's happening due to the illegalizations of, of organs and from live donors because if they wanted they're, they're, they're selling those products. So that means they're going to get in economic incentives from that. They have the desire to sell their organs to gain profits. That's why the uh, kidnapping and those... Sit down, please. And that's why those uh, kidnapping and stealing happens. And that's why we, we strongly argue that, that uh, patients should not be allowed to buy organs. For the procedure. Oh, sit down, please. And... and and the second is that there will, there will be a price control due to uh, ranging from 3,000 and uh, 30,000 and those amount of large amount of money. But as uh, Dong Jun will give the arguments about the dis unfair disadvantage of the money, still the poor people cannot <coughs> buy those products. The price control is just a uh, just an il illumin uh, illusion. Uh, illusion. Sure, please, sir. Yes. <laughs> um, if uh, no, but then then do you mean that if they don't have the money to pay for the organs, they just they shouldn't do anything about it? No, they should. So that we that just okay, because. Okay, I they understand can't. what you mean. Please sit down. Okay, you mean okay, you mean that price control would lessen the person who cannot afford the organs, but how it exists. There's millions of people, two people, as you can see, outside the oh, no. and, and my last model is that intervention of government is greatly inefficient. If the government comes into the market and uh, interrupts the process of the individual hand on those products and the market forces, the, uh, the government would, as they are corrupt, because they, they pursue, they have also an, an incentive, uh, economic incentive, because they're just humans. So that will bring a greater harm, a greater harm to the market. And let me get to my argument. For, and my first argument is that buying organs from live donors is immoral. Immoral to commodify those human <coughs> bodies and making them equal as the value of the economic money. And uh, so as is it, it is prevalent, and it's popular of the transplant of kidneys, livers. It's happening right now, and it's, 
going to happen in the future, but as time passes and passes, and as it becomes more popular and popular, will the other uh, body, parts of body become also used for the plant transplantation, like such as noses, hearts, hearts, eyes, foot, and, and especially eventually any parts of the body will be used. And what will happen? It will it will lead to handling yourself by selling those uh, human bodies. And it is this act is against human dignity because it is putting an equal line and making an equal between <coughs> the money and the value of money and the value of human body. Which means that the value the human body can be manipulated and can be traded by other other products. And let me give an Oh, and, and my second argument is that it brings about risk to live donors. During surgery, in the process of nephrectomy, which is a re process of removal of kidney, there's a, there, it can happen, a disease can occur such as hemorrhage, which is the flow of blood from a, a ruptured blood, uh, blood vessel, and it can happen, delayed and chronic recurring pains can happen. And after the surgery, there will be probably no operation care, which is a common feature of commercial organ harvesting. And for example, in rural Pakistan, Helen Bobby had no choice but to support her family and after her husband had was severe in a work accident. To make ends meet, the person at the, sold her one of her kidneys for about $1,500. A month later, the previous family <laughs> remained married in that and her health was worsened. And today, what did I say? I mentioned two arguments that opposed to the idea, to the motion that first, it is immoral to commodify human bodies and second, it will bring about risk to life donors and patients. Thank you. <laughs> the second opposition, uh, second proposition speaker is Un Heijin. Let's welcome her. Team, I first rebut to what the opposition team first speaker has argued and go on to our <coughs> own points. Ladies and gentlemen, the first speaker of the opposition team have come, in, uh, come up here and he has actually admitted himself that the illegalization of this trade of oh, organs okay. has caused a problem in black market. This means that they have actually given this debate over to us because they have said themselves that the illegalization caused the caused this devastating situation. So therefore, we should actually legalize this trade. He also came up here and mentioned that it is immoral to put a price on parts of human body. However, if we allow black market to flourish without controlling it, worse things will happen, ladies and gentlemen, as stealing the whole body of human. Black market can be a very dangerous and devastating uh, place if we let this continue to happen. He has also argued that removal, removal of kidney would cause several diseases. However, in the first speech, we have set the limit that we have set the limit to the organs that there will be no great danger to health, even if the organ is um, eradicated from the human body. And this policy rejected. The policy is for the government to provide continuous access to medical care, even after the surgery. So I'll go on to our own arguments. Our second argument is that allowing the patients to buy organs from life donors will save people in need. Here people refer to both patients and donors. The patients will be <coughs> cured by the organs they receive from the donors, and donors will get financial support by providing that organ. Let's look at the aspects of the patient's recovery first. According to American Association of Tissue Banks, over 79,000 US patients are currently waiting for an organ. However, because of the lack of organs, ladies and gentlemen, they're suffering from devastating conditions and insufferable end-stage diseases. Even now, at the moment I am speaking to you, patients are dying, unable to get to organs that will save their lives. Every day, 16 to 17 people die waiting for organs. Therefore, if we allow patients to buy organs from live donors, the organ supply will go up and save the patients. Now let's look at the aspect of the donors. With the policy that donors will continually receive post-operative <coughs> care and access to health medical follow-up, donors will also benefit. 
needy people in need of money to support their family and lead a stable life. We'll be able to get finance and support without grave dangers and their health. So now, reject it. Our third argument is that allowing patients to buy organs from life donors is the best solution at the current moment. There might be possible alternatives that the opposition team might bring up, including cloning human organs of dead people or animal organs. However, first of all, cloning human involves serious ethical issues, as you are probably aware of. An organ from dead has a high possibility of malfunctioning. Now let's look at why the use of animal organs would be so ineffective. The transplant of animal organs into human body is called exotransplants. According to BBC, previously unknown viruses without any cure, such as Ebola or AIDS, can be transferred to human body through animal human transplants. And according to Dr. Meneche, transplant of organ from pig to human will be extremely dangerous <coughs> as we do not know what these unknown viruses will do in human body. In the past 20 years, there have been 40 animal to human organ transplants, and all of them died shortly after the surgery. And according to Professor Andrew Bradley of British Transplantation Society, using animal organs for transplant is several years away. This is because there are still problems with infection as I have previously mentioned. Unlike these ineffective alternatives, the case of alluring the buying and selling between patients and live donors is different. Previously, patients and donors, when they had different blood types, the patient's body showed sign of rejection. However, with the development of recently discovered technology of removing antibodies from the patient's body, which past caused uh, the rejection, these, the patients will be able to furthermore um, receive the organs from the live donors. <coughs> Therefore, this shows a huge potential. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we strongly and reasonably argue to you that our stance, our team of the house, is much more practical, reasonable, and immediate than the opposition side. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, um, we told, told you that we sh you should vote for the proposition side because we believe that it weakens the black market, saves people in need, and saves uh, patients and donors, and actually becomes, it is the best solution in the status quo. Thank you. Okay, I'll remind you after uh, Dong Hoon's speech, uh, we'll call on two of you to make four speeches. So be sure to <coughs> say on either side. Let's welcome Dong <coughs> Good afternoon, uh, honorable judges and Mr. <coughs> Resnick. I'm the second speaker of the opposition side. First, I'm going to give you some rebuttals on the points that uh, the second speaker of the proposition side made and <coughs> move on to our team's own point. So, uh, the the second speaker on the proposition side said that uh, uh, the donors could get uh, 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 additional uh, he healthcare services from the government uh, when they uh, after after they uh, donate their organs, but this care has a limitation. Not everyone can get this service, so it would be a problem. And <coughs> the, oh, the removal of a kidney will uh, lead to another problem of the, the donor, because uh, considering the uh, increasing obesity rate, uh, the donors are likely donors who are probably poor uh, and they will not get uh, a live a good quality uh, uh, life of good quality so they're probably they, uh, they're, they're likely to get more diseases than the rich so 
in front, <coughs> and this will lead to uh, another need of organ transplantation and a lot of health care. So, Any information, sir? I'll project it. So I'll move on to our team's third point. Our team's third point is that uh, the le legalization of uh, donor uh, uh, bu buying organs from uh, live donors to make uh, a cause unfair disadvantage for supposed don recipients uh, who are unable to pay for the organ. And in, in addition, the additional costs uh, <coughs> will make the price even higher, so it'll be hard for the poor to buy the organ. So, poor information, sir. According to a survey conducted by the WHO, the average cost of liver transplantation was approximately $100,000, followed by uh, for another four forty thousand dollars to pay as a guarantee, and the average cost for a kidney was about eight eighty thousand dollars. Also followed by information, sir. Rejected. Also followed by uh, three uh, thirty thousand dollars of guarantee fee. Our honorable judges, how can a, <coughs> how can a person with a pay of $50 a day can get, can, will have money for this. Rejected. Uh, and for example, uh, as an example of uh, high rocketing uh, additional costs of the organ, in Pakistan, a, a donor uh, was paid only a thousand dollars for a kidney, but the receiver was actually paying more than four, uh, up to forty thousand dollars. So this means that uh, the the, pro the real the actual price was inflate in, in, inflated to uh, over two hundred and fifty percent, and. The, the prices uh, incredibly go up. So, and also, uh, even though the government control the price of the organs and give chance to the poor, the the rich, the rich will get the chance anyway. They will get the first place for the organ transplantation because they're going to uh, they're going to use like bribery. Uh, the rich who are waiting for the, the organ transplantation will get the first place by uh, giving money in the hands of, hands of uh, doctors and go government officials. So, what I want to say is that uh, uh, the skyrocketing price of the organs will depress the poor and uh, give less chance to the poor. Uh, Thank you. Okay, do we have any volunteers? Uh, legalizing the trade of organs, 
they haven't uh, provided an uh, a, an alternative to uh, save all these you know people who are waiting for organ summit. And I think the proposition uh, pointed out well that um, there were no there are no um, better alternatives. So yeah, I think this could um, affect the opposition in a bad way. Okay, thank you. because they cannot get donations. And I believe that they have limited the definition for organs to the ones that will not cause any danger to people when even though they don't have them. If six, I believe that 16 and 17 people who, do, who die from getting, um, unable to getting the donation are dying because they are not, uh, they cannot be able, they cannot get donations for serious um, vital Organs that they really need. If the organs that they, uh, if the organs are not really need, need that you don't really need the organs in your life, and people get um, diseases, they can just get rid of them if they don't need them in their in in living their life. So I believe that um, <coughs> I, I want the proposition team to elaborate um, to tell us. What 16 and 17 people dying every day, what organs they need? Because I do not believe that those organs are, are not the organs that you have mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, now uh, the opposition is going to have the chance to finish their remarks. Let's welcome Kim Se Young. for the opposition. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we had a proposition that is only depicting the idealistic future. We had a proposition unwilling to take care of the ones who cannot afford to take the measure that the proposition has suggested. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd first like to rebut the proposition's argument and then elaborate more on the opposition's arguments. The proposition has, well, I'd first like to say that the things that the proposition has come up with is entirely, that we wholeheartedly agree that they have some merit. Getting organs from live donors would be idealistic if people can actually afford to do so. We have to consider, ladies and gentlemen, that this is fine. Therefore, it leads to paying more money to get these things. Also, the uh, proposition has stated, no sir, the proposition has stated that the donor would get a post-medicative post measure from the government in order to take care of his or her health after the donation. However, ladies and gentlemen, that would just make the price of these organs go up. There are already people existing in this world who cannot afford to get these organs. Even without such, pro with, even without such measures such as the pr added price, of the post-medicative measures. Thus, like I've stated before, not everyone is not going to get this service. Only the privileged few who can actually afford to do so will take advantage of this. <coughs> also, the proposition has mentioned some excellent technology that can support the, life, the organs from live donors. However, as I have stated before, I'd like to ask the proposition, how much does all this cost? Can everyone afford this? Can everyone who has a kidney failure or a liver failure afford to take this operation? Also, the proposition has stated that the black market would decrease, decrease due to this measure. However, if there are people who can afford these high skyrocketing prices of the operations, there are going to be people who want some cheaper things, meaning that another sort of black market could flourish. 
Also meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that the means that these people could take care of the organs from the black market would get more <coughs> inhumane. Now I'd like to elaborate on my own arguments. The opposition has clearly stated that we should not be allowed to buy organs from live donors due to the fact that first, commodification of the human body is immoral, and second... Before you proceed, ma'am. No, sir. And second, it is a risk to live donors and the recipients. And third, we have said that it is an unfair disadvantage for those who cannot afford to do so. I have mentioned my second and third argument while rebutting the proposition's argument, which was that not everyone can, can afford to do this. Therefore, the idealistic measures suggested by the proposition is currently idealistic. And my first argument that commodification of the body is immoral was not actually targeted by the proposition. They have just said that no great harm is being done to the body. So what is the problem? <coughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, here is the problem. Commodification of body, that is the reason why prostitution was banned. That is the reason why we're not allowed to sell parts of our bodies. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the most important value in the society is human rights and human values. If we put a, put a price on these organs, it will lead, as our first speaker has mentioned, to we will know where to draw the boundary. We wouldn't know <coughs> where to finish. Today, I ask two things from the proposition. First, I ask them to stop suggesting the idealistic measure that they have suggested and look at the current situation where many people cannot pay for these things. Second, I ask them to look at the fact that human, we cannot commodify human body and the fact that it is immoral to do these things. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I beg you to beg to vote for the proposition. Thank you. for the proposition side. Before I start my speech, I would like to mention some part of it. What the opposition side is presenting us is nothing, ladies and gentlemen. The first and the second speaker of the opposition side weren't able to provide their arguments because they were so fed up with preventing themselves from our POIs and their rebuttals. And also, what the third speaker of the opposition side has mentioned is nothing else but them rep <coughs> repeating what the first and the second speaker said. However, we the proposition have managed to come up with three, uh, three main clashes. The first one is about the practicality, and the second, whether it's applicable, and the third, about the human rights, the dignity, and whether it's moral or not. Now I would like to start with the first point, the, <coughs> the practicality. In order, for the do uh, in order for the organ to be transplanted, many things should be matched. In, in, including the blood types. And, and it has been proven that only 25%, it, even, though the, even though a person is within that family, only, there's only 25% of possibility that organ transplantation is possible. What can you learn from this, ladies and gentlemen? We need a variety of people. We cannot just limit these people from people who are around us, people who are willing to give it to us. And we are, we are trying to give it, <coughs> we are trying to give organs to these desperate people from, from <coughs> by getting organ donations from worldwide. And, what, and what, no, what the opposition is saying is this is immoral and, they, and because this is unethical on the basis of some people that we should stop this organ, uh, organ donation from live donors. And just because it is, it is unethical to, to some people, we, it doesn't mean that we should get rid of these lives. Life is a universal one and also it is, in, it, it is in, inconvertible when it is given away. Now the second one, the uh, second clash, whether it's applicable or not. The opposition side is claiming that the people who need organ donation are too poor to buy these. 
And also, the price, it is too hard for the government to control. However, ladies and gentlemen, we have a system called government aid. As you all learned in the economics class, the government can provide aid for these people, so the poor people can also <coughs> buy these organs. Plenty and also, no, and also, the price is not controlled by the government. However, it is controlled by the market. They are making a big flaw. And also, look at in the case of Spain. When government is interfering in this price market, when they are having a different, <coughs> a different path by making a different legislative reaction, it has been proven that Spain has the most successful organ donation. And, it, and, it, and this, this, like, this solution is being imitated by every other country. Like, Point of information, sir! Yes. You have said that it is a donation of organs, not the sale of organs. Therefore, what you're saying is that we should, don we should make urge people to donate their organs, organs, not sell them. Which goes against your point, sir. No, it isn't. We are saying, saying that if we increase the organs, organ donation, it increases the supply. And what the opposition, in, in, in this point, is the, what the opposition has failed to mention. When the supply goes up, the price goes down, but however the quantity goes up. As a result, this means that more people will be able to buy organs and from, um, from, these, organ donation, from these organ donors. <clears throat> and the last part is that the, about the dignity. The opposition side is claiming that human rights is more important. However, why don't we consider the human rights of the receivers, ladies and gentlemen? Don't these people have the right to live their lives? And however, and they are claiming that, the, that it is lowering the dignity of human because they are selling, selling human bodies as like a commodity. However, can we think this as perse persevering the endangered life of people who are suffering from, from this such severe da damages. Before you immortal, proceed, no, sir. So, so, such immortal damages. It is preventing the future sacrifices. This is not lowering the dignity. <coughs> and, for, and, uh, and also, I would like to add the point that <coughs> so some, of the, some of the countries, and the, develop, the, the developing countries, according to the PPP, the Purchasing Power, purchasing power Parity, they have a GDP, a GDP per capita of, of lower like than $100. $100. For example, in Ethiopia, they have a $90, $90 of GDP. When, the, when, they, when they are able to sell organs and when they receive like $1,000 or $2,000, this can be an immense effect for their, for their normal lives. So ladies and gentlemen, I strongly propose that you should pass this motion. Thank you very much.